Today we're going to wire up this dual battery isolator kit into my old camper. So I picked this battery isolator kit up on Amazon, I believe for about $80. It's a complete kit, it comes with very comprehensive instructions, which is everything that it comes with. I bought this thing a few months ago and uh, for this camp project that I'm working on. And now we have some weather finally where I can crawl under the truck without getting completely soaked. Um, also the camper is built up enough now to where it's ready for electricals. So, let's see what we got. Positive, comes with the ground, bunch of zip ties, some hardware, some shrink wrap, and battery post connections. Excellent. And for the isolator. wires here and a couple of posts okay so I haven't really found a place to mount it yet so we're gonna go ahead and skip that step do a fun part and run this uh, positive wire through the under the underside of the truck through various loops and things alongside the frame and then we'll go ahead and run her into the camper that went through the trouble of making this complicated dual battery isolator but they didn't snip where you feed the cables so we're gonna go ahead and snip on these a little bit Since I don't have enough cable uh, to run the isolator to the primary battery, I'm going to use this ground cable that was supplied with the kit. Since I already have a nice ground uh, running off the camper battery, so we'll go ahead and wire this up. Okay, so we're gonna give this uh, battery box a try here. Um, I picked this battery box up for about 20 bucks, $28 or something like that. It's a marine battery box. It comes with tie downs and stuff, everything that you need. I think how I'm going to run this is that cable is just long enough, I think, to reach where I want it. I'm gonna mount the battery box right in here. I think I'm just going to uh, screw it in to the flooring there so that it's hard mounted. Wire it up. The 
that is how you wire up two six volt batteries in series so that they are running 12 volt. So when you run them in parallel, so these are two six volt batteries, it would be hooking the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative and then essentially it just fuses these batteries together so it runs as one giant ass six volt battery. Uh, but we want to run everything 12 volt and so to do that, just like I did here, you hook the negative one battery to the positive of the other and then you obviously run a ground of some sort and then we'll hook the power from the first battery to the positive of this battery. Okay, 13.7, she's holding pretty good. And all I did here is hook the, uh, touch the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. And that's confirmation that we hooked it up correctly and that there is still juice in these batteries. These batteries have been sitting on my garage floor all winter, so I'm pretty impressed with them. Uh, next, we need to connect the positive on the other side up to the primary battery and the engine bay. And uh, I should, uh, we should be pretty much done. Truck on. Let's go ahead and see if we are charging. Come on now. Oh yeah. 15.8. So it was at 13.5. Now it's holding at 15.8. So we. Definitely getting a charge. Everything seems to be working. All right, we got the old battery isolator wired up to the primary battery. And it seems to be working all right, as you've seen. Uh, when the truck was, was running, we had about 14, no, 15.8 volts running to these rear camper batteries. So that is a major win. And, uh, you may be wondering, well, some of you may be wondering um, you know, why choose an isolator over you know, switches or other things like that. I chose an isolator uh, for this project specifically uh, because I, uh, I was just running these batteries straight into the uh, truck batteries and I had an on and off switch. Uh, but the trouble is when you're doing that, when the truck is running, the truck is always pulling power from the camper batteries and the camper batteries are always pulling power from the truck and there really is no, no separation of powers um, and so what the isolator does is it will make sure that the truck batteries are charged first and once those reach a certain voltage then it will send juice back to these rear camper batteries and what it also does is it will not allow the truck to pull power from the camper batteries. So, um, so the camper will only be running power off of those uh, golf cart batteries there. And ultimately that'll be a better system. Um, it will ensure that these batteries stay charged longer. It will kind of get any disruptive power drains back and forth between the truck batteries and the camper batteries and it's just a lot safer so that's how you install it um, or that's how I installed it and you know that it works I picked it up for about $80 on Amazon so we'll go ahead and link that in the description I'll link uh, this battery box in the description too if you're running a similar setup and you want to use something like that it was like 28 bucks 
All right, folks, that'll do it for this video. Uh, smash that like button if you found this video uh, useful, helpful, entertaining. It really does help the old uh, YouTube, YouTube algorithms. Gets this video out in front of other people that are like-minded like you and I. Subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Um, I believe this will be episode four of Camper Hack. Uh, go check out the other uh, three videos I have up already. We're gonna keep keep on keeping on with this camper build. Get her wired up, and then hopefully take her out camping here pretty soon. Cause now we are officially in spring weather. Now there's still snow in the mountains, but the snow down below is pretty much all melted off. So we are good to go. All right, folks, thanks for hanging out for another episode. We will see you on the next one.